Do you struggle fitting in? Do you feel like you need to present a false self in order to get the world to accept you? Do you really know who you are? Do you want to? In today's episode of Going Deeper, I'm going to teach you how to basically learn to be your real self. And we're going to talk about that and so much more on today's episode of Going Deeper. So welcome. Welcome to today's episode of Going Deeper with John Morris. Join the show that tackles the topics that many around the world struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis. From mental and physical health, to emotional and spiritual well-being. But that's not all. John also shares his teaching on more focused topics, such as anxiety, self-image, gaining employment, the importance of educating oneself, developing a deeper spiritual connection, mental and physical well-being, and so much more. Want to be the best you can be? You're in the right place. And now please welcome Mind, Body and Soul's very own John Morris. Well, hi folks and welcome to another exciting episode of Going Deeper. I am your host, John Morris, a psychologist in training, the philosopher, the business guy, the guy ultimate that's going to help you get from where you are to where you want to be. And I'm delighted to be here with you today to present to you this episode on how to be the real you. So many people in life are presenting what we call the fake self, the false self. They wear masks all the time. And what tends to happen is, you know, the, they, they reach a stage in their life where they have to make a decision. They either allow the world to see who they really, really are and accept the consequences, accept the issues and the changes of life and the transitions that come from that, or they will go to their deathbed clutching on to a, a, a preconceived idea of who they wanted the world to believe themselves to be. That is why I am back dressed like this, because I am very, very comfortable with it. I believe actually that I, I you know, produce some of my best teaching with it. And this is more who I am for this show. So when we're talking about presenting our real self, what do we mean by that? Well, we mean not feeling the need to present a fake self, not needing to feel like we have to put a mask on everything in order to convince everybody that everything's wonderful and everything's great and there's no problems in our life at all. Sometimes we try and hide away the real person that we are. So for example, I have a friend of mine who is a great actress. She's very, very dramatic. She's very, very creative. She's very alive. She's also very artistic. And for many years, she hid away. She hid her talent away. And she was on the verge of dying with her music still in her. And what we mean by that is dying with her talent still in her, the world would never have gotten to see this phenomenal actress. And I spent some time coaching her, as I do with a number of folks, and we walked through a number of different things and we developed some strategies for her to be able to develop her real self, for her to be able to tell her family who she really was. We got to the root of the problem, which was fear, fear of rejection from her family when she told them that she wanted to be an actress and that she'd done all these amazing paintings. When we present our real self to people, they're going to do one of two things. They're either going to be completely dismissive or they're going to be very, very accepting. And what I found in my own life is people are very, very accepting of me in, in the whole. Um, but also those that aren't accepting mean that they really don't understand love. To love somebody means that you don't need them to bend to your will in order for you to accept them. I'll say that again. To really love someone means that you, they don't need to bend to your will in order for you to accept them. And that's what true love really is. What it means to present your true self is really, really important. And it's important for a number of different reasons. And I just want to just run through a couple of these quickly. I know already, you know, I've been setting this up for you. But, you know, one of the most important things is, is presenting your real self means that you can construct your life your way. Many people fail to realize that we are essentially like blobs of clay or something I know a heck of a lot about, paintings. When I stand there or I kneel on the ground and I'm painting away, I am constructing an entire world from my imagination or from a photograph. And what I do is I'll start with the sky and then maybe I'll decide, okay, I want a sunset sky. 
and then maybe I'm going to decide, right, do I want a, a waterfall scene? I'm going to paint the waterfall in, I'm going to paint the clouds in, I'm going to paint the water in, I'm going to paint rocks and trees and, and grass and all kinds of things. I create my world by the power of thought. And we're going to be talking about that in an upcoming episode. The power of thought is really, really important because you literally create your life. You and you alone are responsible for the way that your life is because every thought that you've had and every action you've ever taken has led you to exactly to this moment in time. There are no excuses for that and it's important to take responsibility for your own stuff and I know there can be external things that happen for sure. I get that, okay? You're talking to someone who's lived on the for, for two lifetimes, you know, but it's really important that you understand that you can actually create your life in your own way. If you want to be an author, Many people will say to themselves, oh, I could never be an author. Well, why not? Oh, because it's too difficult, you know. And, and, but what about if you do the research? What about if you do a, a study? Many people say that they want to be financially, you know, set for life. And I said, well, how are you going to get this? I have no idea. So how about, if you, how about if you turned it into a study? How about if you researched how to make money? And once you research how to make money, making money actually becomes really, really simple. Because the secret to making money is providing service to other people. It's that simple. And I'm going to talk you through that in an upcoming episode as well. So you've got to learn really how to create your own life in your own way. And that's really, really vital. Step two is stop feeling a need to present a fake self. Many people around the world will ask you on any given day, how are you doing today? The standard response around the world is, oh yes, I'm doing good, things are fine, yeah, I'm doing okay. When inside you might be crumbling and you might be going through some horrific battles. I know some of the clients that we've coached in the LGBT community um, that have said, you know, I wish I could just turn around and say, you know, I'm really struggling with my sexuality. I wish I could tell people who I really feel I am. And my standard response is, well, why do you feel the need, number one, to hide it, but number two, to let the world know, you know, your sexual preferences. We're going to cover that in an upcoming episode as well. We've got a lot of, we've got a lot of exciting episodes coming up for you folks. But you've got to stop feeling the need to present a false self because this is the reason why. As we've already said with love, if the people around you don't accept you for who you are, there are hundreds of thousands of other people that will because they're the chances are they have gone through what you've gone through and they're looking for a person exactly like you. So you can either, you know, clutch onto that fake self and, and, and go to your grave with that, or you can actually unleash your creative skill and not be worrying about what other people are going to say and what other gonna, people are going to do. Remember this, judgments do not reveal us. Judgments reveal the person who is doing the judging. So whenever we make judgments, we reveal not who they are, but who we are. And it's really important that we don't judge. It's really important that we allow people to be who they are. If they're not hurting anybody else, if they're not, you know, uh, behaving in a way that's causing destruction or damage to somebody else's life, then what the heck's it got to do with you? And it's really important. So often we feel that we have to conform to a certain way because it's what society tells us we've got to do. It's maybe what our religions tell us we've got to do. It's, it's what culture tells us we've got to do. And the reality is, if you were to examine your life from the moon, and you were to sit on the moon and you're looking on out, you know, the reality is none of that stuff even comes into it. It really doesn't, you know, you, you, you just see the world as beautiful and perfect and, and amazing for what it is if you're sitting on the moon. And there was this image that was taken from the moon looking at the earth and I thought, wow, how tiny our problems are and how they really don't matter. But they only matter because society, the world culture, the media tells us they matter. And when you actually break down and say, you know, a lot of this stuff that we stress out about in terms of how I turn up to work, how I present myself, how I talk, how I do this, it doesn't matter. All that matters is, are you presenting your best self each and every single day? And when you're doing that, no one can ask anything more of you. They may, they may try to, but they can't. And it's really important. So that leads us now to point number three. You've got to learn how to love and accept yourself. 
the majority of people that I work with and that I coach, whether it be teenagers, whether it be adults, whether it be grandparents, whether it be people in relationships, or people wanting to get into relationships, always come out with the same answer to this question. Do you love yourself? And it comes back in a variety of forms and the majority will say that they absolutely hate the way that they look or the way they, they actually hate themselves. And I'm like, why do you hate yourself? Sometimes because they, they don't look like the latest celebrity or they haven't got the biggest muscles or they haven't got an eight pack, you know, of, of abs, which if you don't know these muscles here, um, you know, and, and I find that incredible. You know, and, and then on the other corner they'll say, well, that they don't love themselves because their husband doesn't approve of them, or their wife doesn't approve of them. Let me clarify something for you here and now if I can. Loving and giving out love has nothing to do with anybody else. Love is something that you are. It's not something that you act. Love is the way that you be. It's not something that you just perform. Does that make sense? It is really important that you realize if you want a loving relationship, you got to give out the love you have to be loving and stop relying on somebody else to fulfill that need for you. Because when you're relying on somebody else, you're taking away your own special power. You're taking away your own gifts and your own special abilities. What you're saying is your external world influences your internal world more than your internal world affects your external world. So many people these days are, uh, you know, living this crazy and chaotic life and all because they haven't gotten to understand the human body. This is the most sophisticated form of technology on the entire planet. And it still amazes me how many people just don't have a damn clue how it works. If you really want to get to know how to love yourself, you really want to get to know how to love other people and how to be really loving, which means that you're forgiving, that you're kind, that you're compassionate, that you're empathetic, that you're, and by empathetic, I don't mean scrambled in the brain, I mean genuinely can understand where someone else is coming from, where you can allow a person to be who they are despite maybe it going against your own personal dharma, your own personal calling, your own personal mantra, whatever it might be, your, your own personal code of ethics. But true love means that they don't need to be somebody else to gain your acceptance. Now, you may not agree with it, and you can say, look, I don't agree with your lifestyle, but it doesn't mean that I don't love you. Why? Because I can love you despite what you choose to do. When you love and accept yourself, as opposed to trying to create somebody else. And a little thought that went into my head is oftentimes we don't accept ourselves because we're so busy trying to be somebody else. I spent many years trying to be somebody else. I spent many, many years, you know, feeling that the world wouldn't accept me if I showed up in, in this way as John Morris. If I allowed the artistic version to come out of me, if I allowed the, you know, the studied version to come out of me, and then I suddenly realized the exact same reasons to why I'm dressed in this way today is because you guys, believe it or not, don't want somebody that looks just like you, that sounds just like you. If you did, you know, you wouldn't be watching now. You want somebody who's been there, but ultimately isn't afraid to stand in front of the world and say, here I am. That isn't afraid to stand in front of a large audience dressed like this and say, here I am. When you accept who you are and stop trying to be somebody else, you will realize that you have just unleashed the greatest, most phenomenal power known to man gift of acceptance, the gift of love. And yes, it may take some time to, to fully love yourself. But remember, what we talk about, or, or let me rephrase that, how we talk about ourselves reveals what we truly believe in ourselves. Like, I don't have any problem standing here and saying, I believe I'm a genius. 
because I desire that quality. I desire to be able to be able to study, to gain my psychology degree, to eventually gain my doctorate in psychology, to make a massive difference to people's lives. And it doesn't matter what anybody else says, because that doesn't affect me. Why? Because I don't allow it to affect me. I choose all of these things. If you followed me for a long time, you will have heard me say over and over again, life is not what happens to you, it's how we choose to respond, which is a direct quote from Carl Jung. Life is not what happens to us, it's how we choose to respond. It's how we choose to create our lives. When you truly love yourself, when you truly accept yourself, it means that you have finally allowed yourself and the world to share in the greatest gift, which is the gift of you. You were put here for some specific purpose. There's, there's something that you can do that no one else can do. This is what I coach people on now, and it usually only takes one or two um, uh, sessions together to be able to coach somebody and say, look, when you love yourself and when you figure out who you are and what you're passionate about, what you love, you found your purpose in life. And when you find your purpose in life, it becomes this incredible thing, but it all starts, all of it starts with you, with accepting yourself, with loving yourself, with realizing that you are an incredible, incredible being. The chances of you being here, believe it or not, of something like 440 billion or million or whatever it is, to one. Just for you to be here on Earth, it's incredible. When you love yourself, when you accept yourself, that is the beginning. When you decide in your own mind that you can sit down with people calmly and rashly and say, I want to be who I am. I want to be the artist. I want to be the actress. I want to be the musician. You know, other people may look at you and say, well, son, daughter, I don't know that that's going to work out. Trust me. If you learn how to market and you learn how to sell your gift and provide service to other people, the money will come. How do I know this? Because millions, literally, have gone on before you and done it. And you get these naysayers that say, oh, there is no money in art. That's nonsense. I managed to pay, along with my wife, for the house that we are in, for the studio we're in, for the camera equipment that we're in, all from the art business. So I can tell you firsthand that this is as true as I'm standing here right now. You're going to start by loving yourself, by accepting yourself. By saying right here, right now, making a conscious decision that says I'm never ever again going to present a fake and false self to the world. That's what oftentimes leads to people feeling depression. When you feel depressed, it's because you've had to present this fake self for so long. And then you go into this stage where you just sort of shut down. And that's what it is, it's, it's called deep rest, depressed. Because you're so exhausted from having to present this false self. Nowadays, I don't need to. I don't worry or concern myself, you know, whether a family member accepts me or if a friend accepts me or if a client accepts me. That's fine, that's on them, that's not on me. I can't control that. And equally, I'm not gonna change who I am just to try and fit into a mold that I was never designed to. So I hope that really helps you today. And I hope it helps you ultimately find yourself. Because guess what? People, people always talk about, you know, oh, finding themselves, finding themselves. You always find yourself. You find yourself every single morning. Because you take yourself with you 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And while we're on the topic of art, for those of you that don't know, I am also a professional artist. Uh, to give you my full credentials, I'm an artist, I'm an author, and I'm a personal development coach. I love doing different things, and I love the variety that comes along with that. And what we're going to do, because I know we've got a number of creative minds that, that watch every single week, and I appreciate you guys so much. But I've been working on a show called Art Tips with John. It's a show, actually, that we filmed a couple of years ago. And it teaches people how to create a successful art business or a creative business 
from start to finish. So if you're in the music industry, if you're in, if you're in the author or a publisher, if you're in the acting industry, if you're in the art industry or any one of the creative industries, then this really is the show for you. And it's going to air from this Friday coming. We're really excited about it. It's going to be a re-release, relaunch, the first time that it's ever been on this YouTube channel. And hopefully it's going to help you, again, get from where you are to where you want to be. And if you are interested, we've got a course all on how to run a successful creative business. I call it a successful art business, but art to me means creative. Okay, and when you can do that, and when you unleash your creative skills, again, that's another stage to accepting who you are. Folks, I'm going to stop there, but I just want to thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been helpful for you today. Let me know in the comment section below if it has. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Share this with a friend, because it could be the very, very thing that they need in their hour of darkness, in their pursuit of loving and accepting, and shedding their false self more than anything. And of course, as always, I have been your host, John Morris. Come and visit us at thebattlesweallface.com. Get in touch with me if you want personal development coaching to help you get from where you are to where you want to be. Until next time, take care. God bless. I'll see you same time, same place. We're going deep back. Take care. Do you, your son or daughter, struggle with direction, clarity and purpose? Maybe you struggle with anxiety. Maybe you struggle with self-esteem or confidence issues. Maybe you've got great ideas, but you've no idea how to get from where you are to where you want to be. Don't worry, you're not alone. People around the world struggle with these issues. Hi there, I'm John Morris. I'm the coach of the creative mind and I'm also a psychologist in training. For the last two decades, I've worked with people from all walks of life and all over the world, all with a wide variety of issues. I've worked with people from youth groups to adult education to people dealing with day-to-day -day living issues. And each one of them has an amazing story to tell and we've helped them get clear as to where they are and clear as to where they want to be. And I want to help you too. Like a lot of life coaches and therapists that like to drag things on and leave you dangling on the carrot, I want to make sure that each and every single time that we meet and have a life coaching session together, that you never ever leave saying, man, that was a waste of time, or I didn't get the value that I desired. I am committed to making sure that each and every single time we meet, you are one step closer by the time we finish to a goal that you have in mind. So why should you work with me? Well, let me tell you, as I said, I'm committed to making sure that I provide value, that I provide something that's step by step and easy to follow. I'm also a fantastic listener. I've been blessed with the gift of listening and I love to listen to people, their stories, their, their dreams, their desires, because there's nothing more energetic and passionate to me than when a client gets their first desire or they get that goal or they hit that big target or whatever it might be. And also, as the trifecta, I am committed to you to helping you take action. So whether or not it be deciding on the university you want to go to, deciding on the course that you want to be at, helping you get excited and passionate about your work environment, whatever it might be, I am committed to helping that happen. I'm also committed if you need to shed some pounds, if you need to gain some muscle mass, if you need to, I don't know, develop your self-esteem, I'm committed to helping you take action and following a step-by-step plan of action that we can put together. But now folks, I want to tell you about the early bird special offer that we are launching right now. It is for 10 people and 10 people alone. That's right, if you are interested in having life coaching sessions with me one-on-one, -on -one, 10 people have the opportunity to do that and we're looking to help these people change their lives completely. We take ages 14 and upwards, so if you're interested in learning how to get from where you are to where you want to be, to do really develop that passion to live a life that you enjoy as opposed to a life that you wake up and think, ah, oh, you know, how to develop and change your mindset from maybe a negative one to a positive one. Understanding what fuels your mindset and understanding what creates the kind of life that you want to live, then get in touch with me today. I would love to hear from you. As I say, this is open only for 10 people and once it's done, it's done. So click that box below, get in touch. Let's have a conversation backwards and forwards and see if we're a fit for each other. And I look forward to working with you. Have an amazing day folks take care god bless and i will see you soon